Hey guys, how is it going? And welcome to the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. It is Tuesday, January 30th, and so happy for you joining us. We are ready to start another day together with the Lord. So subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. So today we have an exciting podcast for you. We have Pravi in the media, the practical word study, and of course, commentaries, updates, and news on what is happening around the world in this history today. All right, everyone, how are you doing? The meat of the week has begun. It is Tuesday. Hope you guys enjoyed yesterday's podcast or just your day in general. How are you doing uh, yeah, don't forget we have Q&A Thursday, uh, so get those questions ready. Send them to me whenever you can. I've already got three different questions coming out. Great questions, too. Hope it's something that, that uh, you guys can really uh, think about and get our heart. And um, if you have any questions or anything about life, about faith, about the word, whatever it is, go ahead, put them in the comments. You can DM me whatever you want to. All right. And for today's podcast, yes. Go ahead, leave a like. Like this video just to communicate with me, just showing that you appreciate the work that's going on. And then comment below. would love to hear what you guys are thinking too. Now, uh, I am super happy for everyone joining us today and every weekday on the Morning Star Drive. So let's get up and support each other each and every day. This week's Sunday message title, Be Thankful, God Takes Action with the One Who Knows. Okay, so here it is, guys. It is Tuesday. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's kind of a very different week for me here in Malaysia because there is a huge holiday coming up around the corner and it's uh, it's Chinese New Year. And Chinese New Year is huge. Like they close down the churches and stuff for a couple of days. All the head leaders go back to their hometowns to see their families. I would say it's, very, it's equivalent to uh, the harvest, like Chuseok. Like the Thanksgiving in Korea, where everyone goes back to their hometown, crazy busy. Everyone is driving back home and stuff like that too. So, I thought uh, here, like it's already being talked about. All the decorations are up everywhere. For myself personally, the best part I like about Chinese New Year here in Malaysia is going over to members' houses and playing mahjong with uh, their parents. That's what I like to do. A little bit of gambling here, you know, just fun, fun gambling, talking. I'm going to be going on another camping trip uh, during Chinese New Year too, so I'm pretty happy about that. But yeah, pretty excited, pretty happy, and I hope it's something that you guys will also really, uh, you know, I'm not sure who else is celebrating Chinese New Year except Asians, right? Like even my parents, my parents are have lived in Canada for like over 40 years now, and they, no, for like almost 50 years now. And they don't celebrate the Lunar New Year. Chinese New Year, they don't celebrate it. It's only January 1st and that's it. Uh, and I also think part of it is because they're a little bit older and they don't want to have all these celebrations and constantly doing all that work. You know, they're over 70 and stuff like that too. But yeah. Uh, so here's a funny rumor that's, that uh, I heard from a friend the other day, right? So there's a friend of mine telling about a rumor. And uh, uh, this is more of a funny one. Guys, this, this is not a bad rumor, stuff like that too. Um, it's a rumor... That is untrue, but I wish it was true, right? That's what kind of rumor it is, right? So rumorville, and I think part of it has to do with like my Instagram, right? Is like, oh, I think people are thinking that I'm very rich. Like, like it's kind of funny. Don't you think that's kind of funny, guys? People think I'm rich, right? And like I said, this is a rumor I actually wish was true, right? I drink a latte every day and... um. You know, sometimes too, uh, I go eat out and do stuff like this. And, you know, I can understand in other countries like Malaysia, the earning power of the money that they make is not as big as other countries. So, you know, uh, a latte is quite expensive here in Malaysia. But, uh, you know, I think to dispel the rumors, right, because I think it's quite funny, um, is one thing that I don't have that everyone else does is I don't have any major bills. I don't have any debt. Meaning, like, the biggest bill that I owe every month is my cell phone bill. I have no house or rent. I have no car payments. I I have, like, almost everything I earn is disposable income. And the little income that I earn, uh, which is in U.S. dollars, is worth five times more in Malaysia because of the money exchange, right? So that's why 
Uh, the money I make has a ton more spending power than if I was in America. And and to be honest, uh, like full disclosure, if I was in America, I would not have. It would be impossible me for me to survive on what I earn. Impossible. I would be out in the streets pretty much, right? So, and, and another thing I think that I do tend to do uh, is when I'm inspired by people, I am very generous. Like the people who I'm inspired by here, especially when it comes to like the 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 kids, the campus, right? That are running really hard, doing all these missions. They're just such a, like they bring such energy and, and joy to the church. And it just reminds me of when I was younger, when I was running this history. And, you know, when I was young and running this history, I was so thankful and grateful to like the older sisters and brothers in the church that would like be moved by me. And then they would take me out to eat. And I'd be so thankful for that too. So whenever, you know, I get inspired by certain people too. I get inspired and then I want to make sure that they're treated really well too. So I'm very generous to those types of people too who are running for this history really well. So yes, guys, rumor is crushed. Sadly, I am not wealthy. Sadly, I am not rich. And most likely I will never be unless this week's message God says he's not going to just say, don't worry. He's going to take care of it. And God said he will take full responsibility for everything and more. But of course, the caveat comes out. If there is a mountain, sometimes it's better to just go around it. <laughs> so I'm just like, I was like, all right, all right. So I'm like, yeah. But I'm I'm happy though. I'm I'm very very happy. And um, you know, Chinese New Year's around the corner. I think it's not it's not this week. It's next week. The end of next week. So uh, I am I'm you know gonna see how many people's different people's parents I can play mahjong with. And also I have to decide what I'm gonna do next. Like what country or if I'm gonna stay here a little bit longer. Like that's all stuff I do have to think about. Right. So nowadays, um, what is really, really awesome. And I think this is something that uh, we should be thinking about in our everyday lives, all like in our lives of faith too, is I am having so many great conversations with many people, all different departments these days, right? Like the topic from last week, remember I talked about it all week. This topic has opened up so many other avenues of conversations and other different topics, Right, like even today, right before I started uh, recording, I, I I went to a cafe, met some uh, met some good friends, and uh, we had just had so like just like three hours of great conversation over a coffee. And this is something I already have plans for like two, three more people that I meet this week. Also, I'm thankful for it. I really am super grateful and thankful. And you know, it's one of the things I'm I'm very thankful for. It's not it's not because it gives you know, of course, it gives me content to talk about here, but it's. I, I really, really, like, uh, so, so let me, let me just, let me just talk about, oh, no, no, okay, let me first say why, okay, so with these different topics, I think something that is very, very important for all of us uh, is having these difficult conversations, right, and it doesn't matter if you're a star, if you're blessed, if you're JS, if you're campus, whatever it is, you know, I think these conversations are very, very important. And there's going to be different topics for different people, different perspectives, different views. And we're going to understand each other a lot better too. When we have these discuss discussions in love, I think it's one of the greatest ways to resolve the issues in our hearts. I really do. Because I, me talking to a blessed family, I love it because I always get this point of view and perspective that I'm not thinking about, right? Like I told you guys when I was with David Baker, spent three weeks with his entire family, I only see it from my lens. I don't see it from the married person's lens. And I think that's really, really important. And I would say, uh, as a leader, one of the things that's going to be very, very important is we cannot neglect anyone inside the church and we need to understand really well. Right. And there could be a lot of help that we don't even know that we're going to get help from. Like, I'll tell you this. Uh, if you look at right now inside the church, like look at your churches now, what percentage of your church is like families, JS and blessed families. And then they're bringing their children to the church, too. If you really think like if you really think about it, how many people are they? And I would say that as the churches are getting larger, like most of the churches I see, their churches are like. About 50% is families. That's a huge chunk of your church. 
And if you can't understand or if you can't take care or if you can't really have those conversations even with the families, you're basically cutting out 50% of your church. And I think that's that's something that's going to be very, very, you know, it's, it's not good for um, for people to be leaving that much outside of their church. You know what I mean? And I think it's something that we really have to think about very deeply, right? We can't leave on all these people, right? And like, just like last week's subject, I'm not going to be, I'm, obviously, I'm not going to be continuing about that. But I'll tell you right now, even to today, right? Even today, right? And this is like, uh, late afternoon on a Monday, I'm still getting people calling in, texting me, DMing me, wanting to meet with me, telling me it was a great conversation. And I think it's great. Differing opinions, different thoughts. Also, people talk about bad experiences, right? Bad experiences with, you know, bad experiences with uh, stars or blessed families or children or there's just, you know, there's going to be good and bad experiences everywhere. It doesn't mean the whole thing is bad. But when you get to hear about it, you get to understand why some people will have a bad perception, why some people have a great perception. And when we understand this, like the biggest thing we have to understand is it's all real experiences. It may not be the right conclusion, but in their world, that's what they're really going through. Right, And if people are having a difficult time with it, if there is no discussion on these topics that people aren't talking about, what's going to happen? Is people are going to think only to you know their what what they were thinking the entire time right like if if there's no one else to talk about, no other differing opinions, then what they think and feel becomes reality to them. But you know we have to be in this position as people of this history where we can really uh, help people understand better and do better too. Right. So, yeah, I, I this. Yeah. Great. Oh, man. Three hours. I don't even know how to put this conversation. Like when you have a great conversation, it's not like you're taking notes. You know what I mean? Because you're so into the conversation that by the time uh, by the time you get to the end of it, you're like, wow, that's a gr-. like these are great points. I wish I could write it down. But, you know. You, you can't remember every single point, but there's so many things. But there's one point that was I, I, I was really thinking about a lot and it is the what happens in uh, what we don't want to happen, but what is happening today is having like kind of having an environment that is more geared towards performative faith, more like a performance, right? Now, what does it mean? Like when I say performative versus true faith, right? Performative faith is someone just checking the boxes and then everyone thinks they have good faith. What does that mean? Check the box of, oh, check off the box of going to Predon. Wow, you have great faith because you go to Predon. Oh, you check the box of going to every Sunday service, every Wednesday service. Oh, you check off the box because like it's, these are all performative. It's got nothing to do with the substance of what you're doing. It's more performative, right? If we see someone performing the life of someone with good faith, we leave them alone or we assume that they have good faith. But when you think about it, when it's more performative, where the, uh, the, what do you call it? What we look for is more performative than what is substantial. Then we are actually pushing a lifestyle of performative faith. Right? Because just because you're doing what a a person of good faith does doesn't mean you actually have good faith. And I think this is where we get confused when we see people doing everything they're supposed to do. Then they leave Providence and we're like, what? But they had good faith. Right? We've, 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 We've all had that feeling before. Like, how did that happen? They had good faith. You know what I mean? And, you know, What do we really base what good faith is? Well, my point to you is this. If someone goes, doesn't go have perfect attendance for a pre-dawn, does that mean they have bad faith? Right? That's a good question. But we could all, we would all agree that there are some people that may not be perfect in attendance, but have better faith than those who have perfect attendance. And it's something that we have to think about is how do we know something is really true? How do we know someone has great faith? How do we know they have bad faith, right? And, you know, how can we, how can we as a community, as a church, as leaders 
help people to gain true faith more than performative faith? Wouldn't it be more than just what they show? And I'm not saying that that everyone who has perfect attendance doesn't have great faith. I'm not saying that also, right? What I'm saying is we couldn't, we can't base it just on the performance. And this leader, um, I, I have great respect for him. And he he said, I have a suggestion. And I, I was like, what do, what, what do you think is a way that you can really like truly check on someone? And he says, what about um, like, what if you have like personal journals? And not, it wouldn't be personal. It would be open to all leaders. Like, what does that mean? Like, it's not like your personal journal, like I have sinned and every leader sees that journal, but it's going to be the journal of your spiritual faith, what you realize. Like uh, one thing he said, and I think this is true too, is a lot of times we are very focused on being busy, right? So it's just about being busy. So busy, busy, busy means it's a good thing. Oh, you're busy. What a great thing. Oh, you're busy. Oh, you're doing so well. You're working so hard, right? But One thing that people forget to do is they'll accomplish some event. They'll do something big and then they just move to the next thing. There is no break of what did we just do? What just happened? What did I realize? What were the things that were difficult? What were the things that were great about this event or this project or this thing that I did, right? And if people have like, their like their journey of leadership or their journey of growing in this history that you know like not remember it's not personal as in like oh i sinned i did this or that is more of like man i just went through this it's kind of like a debriefing right every event should have a debrief right and after you go through the debrief you get to reflect on yourself reflect on the things that you've learned reflect on the things that you realize or what you could do better for next time And if that is something open to all leaders, then we're able to see more than the performative. We're able to see something is that that much more substantial. And I think both are necessary. We need to see the performative part plus the substantial part, realizations, what they learn, what they're going through, what they want to do next. Right. And I thought to myself is like, yeah, you know, whenever there's a new idea, I think the first thing people like to do is to say no or, or try to find what's wrong with it. And I'm, I'm, I think that's a, it's, it's healthy like that too. But, you know, I think um, it's how, like, what other suggestion do you have, right? If we can see these up and coming leaders, have debrief with them, what their thoughts are, their experiences, their realizations. And it becomes much easier to see whether someone is growing whether someone is doing better, right? Truly taking things in, changing, realizing about themselves. What can I do better for the next time? I thought it was a great idea. And it's something that just has to be tried more than like discussed about, right? And of course, there's pros and cons to everything. But I would love to hear if someone has a better idea of how to help people to grow even better too, right? And I think think that's one of the ways that it, it could be done. So that was just one of the topics. I love that topic too. It's like, wow, I never thought of it as a performance or not performance, performative, like checking off the boxes and that gives me good faith. But we all know that the faith is something that's way more internal. It's deeper. It's, it's intrinsic. It's on the inside. So that, that was something that really made me think deeply too. And like after, you know, during this conversation, something crazy happened. Okay. Like something that's so not natural, but it just kind of proved that God was with us. And like after we start talking about the life in Providence, uh, and both me and this guy, we we were we've both been here since the first half, right? He's been here a lot earlier than I have, but one thing that we were we were in agreement with is that in the first half of history, there was more joy, like the joy of being in this history. And somewhere along the line, as you know, as it got closer and closer, probably to like 2009-ish, right? Uh, somewhere along the line, it changed. It really changed. Atmosphere and the mood started to change. Um, it became so much more about numbers, results-oriented, not so much about how people are really doing, but, you know, do we have the numbers? And, and especially during the rapture time. Like we, of course, we all, because the time of rapture was so important that, you know, things were taken like crazy serious to an extreme point, right? 
And we all know how important that time was. But I also know that a lot of times as human beings, we sometimes take things in a very different way than it was actually intended. Like I, I, I really do. Like one of the things that hap- like, that was talked about last week that multiple people have brought up to me is uh, in the past how the uh, how people like even though Sunseem had uh, when it came to face stars, Sunseem had you know he was teaching and and giving you know telling the truth about it, but it turned into something that became a little bit toxic where everyone it became a trend. Everyone wanted to be like a star all of a sudden, and it. At one point, and this is not just one person, but multiple people told me like, yeah, it makes people who are married seem like second class citizens and they're lower and stuff like that too. And, you know, it was never intended, but because of human nature, sometimes we take things in a different way than it was actually intended, right? But here's where it got interesting. As, you know, we're talking for three hours and with, with within the last 15 minutes, uh, we were talking about, uh, we're talking about last week's topic about marriage and this type of stuff, and we're we're discussing like how to how how can we take care take better care of those that are are married or this or that the career department like we're just a lot of good discussion about it. Out of nowhere, some girl just walks up to us, a stranger in the cafe, and says, "I'm sorry, but I overheard your conversation, and I would like to sit in your conversation." Tell me that's crazy. They were listening, like, of course, you know, I'm a loud mouth, right? But we're talking, the conversation was going on. They, they, list, they were listening to what we were talking about. And they were so intrigued by it, they wanted to sit in. And this was just a graduated working Malaysian girl. She's Chinese Malaysian. She was so interested in the topic of marriage and what we we're talking about it. And... She just wanted to join in. And this was right at the time we were getting ready to leave. But it was so, I, I've never experienced that before. And it was so interesting to see someone just come up and want to join the conversation. And I was like, in my head, I was like, could this be a new evangelism strategy? Go to a cafe, talk really loudly about important subject matters, and then people are just going to come up to us. We got their, her number and everything else, right? And I think it's something that... Uh, I, I thought, I was thinking to myself is, what would make this topic so attractive, right? And I thought to myself is, it's not the topic. It really isn't, right? Like, yeah, some people, like many people, like, let's just say there's any topic, sports or whatever it is, right? Or like, in this case, this girl is like marriage, right? Young girl too. And what makes it very, very interesting is not the topic itself, but it's how we discuss it and how we talk about it, going deep into it, trying to figure out the perceptions, the perspectives and stuff like this too, right? And this reminds me of my time in the former faith also. Yeah, me and my buddies, a church group would go out, we'd go to cafes and restaurants, go paintball, do all, play sports. And people love the energy of the group. They love the conversations, how people were very respectful and some people would just say, hey, where are you guys from? Oh, what group are you? Oh, cool, you're a church. And people would just come up to us. Why? Because we were genuinely having great conversation, genuinely talking about things that really mattered in our life, genuinely talking about leadership, about uh, living the life for God, about living, you know, about marriage, this and that, like all these other different things. We genuinely, truly were living in that joy, talking about things that we were so, it was so real to us. And people are just like, they're magnetized by it. And I was just like, that is so interesting because do you think we're the only ones talking about marriage? No, when she overhears us talking about it, she's not just not overhearing us talking about marriage. She's over talking us talking about perceptions, about what is a path, what's a better path. Oh, what did I realize about this? Like there's all these things that start coming up and people are going to be attracted to our perception, our thoughts, the way that we think, the way that we are, how we treat like these are the things that people are going to be very very attracted to, right? And like I said, we weren't there evangelizing. We weren't there trying to trying to grab these people. It was an absolute discussion in love, right? And the person I know is a blessed family, right? 
I am a star. The other person is a star, right? And we're just talking together and giving our viewpoints, our perceptions. What's the best way to move forward? How can we grow better as a history? What are the new, like, you know, one, one thing we talked about was like, yeah, I talked about this yesterday is having that really, like, if you have inexperienced leadership at the very, very top, what happens is everyone follows suit, and if it becomes very stale or if it becomes something where there is no great vision or nothing we're moving towards, then it's always going to be in that type of level, right? It's going to be that level all the time. What level is that? That's going to be the level in which, right, nothing new happens, nothing grows, but we just kind of stick to the status quo, right? It's, it's just nothing's going to happen. And just look at, you know, just look at what's happened over, even for me, over the last 25, 26 years, the biggest difference I see is not the evangelism numbers. The biggest difference I, I see is how joyful and happy people are in this history. That's what it is. And I, I really believe we need to have discussions in love. Discussions in love, meaning I re, the respect for each other, the wanting to have a singular goal of wanting to do better in this history. Right, that singular goal of loving God, loving the Holy Trinity, loving this history, wanted to see it do even better. We want that. We really do. And guess what? Some people disagree. That's okay. Discussion in love. Right? If you have a bad experience, share it. It's fine. Right? Share it. If you have a good experience, share it. Right? Testify. There's so much. We are all going through these real experiences in life. And sometimes it's real only in our hearts and minds because we may have gone through something similar and that's why it hits us even harder. But I would say these discussions are that important. They really are. And when we understand how important these discussions are, what's going to happen? When we start to talk about them, they resolve things. We begin to realize more about other perspectives, other opinions, and other sides. And when that happens, we begin to have a fuller picture of, ah, ah, I got it. That's what, okay, so this is this is not the norm. This is just something that happened in my situation. Okay, I got this, right? And I, and I do think it's something that, uh, yeah, like, yeah, I, I, I think it's something that we really, really have to do our best in, right? And I think it's something that we need to open our, our hearts and ourselves to because without these difficult conversations, nothing moves forward and there's only unresolved knots in our heart, all right, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward. I got way more conversations coming this week, just meeting more and more people. So I'm grateful, I'm thankful, and this is something that I hope that uh, will really, really, um, I ho I'm hoping that this podcast becomes something that can open people's hearts even more to opening ourselves up to each other too, okay? So yeah, today we do have the practical word study. And of course, after that, we have, uh, what's Tuesday? Oh, Pravi in the media. Hope you guys really enjoy. Uh, have a great and awesome time. Uh, and uh, before we get into the practical word study, let's get into the first break of the day.
right, so let's get into today's word study. And of course, every Tuesday we have the practical word study. Uh, so this week's message is pretty clear about being thankful. And the one thing I did want to go over is how can we put the words of God into action, especially when it comes to uh, this week's message about uh, looking back at the things God gave us one by one and being thankful, not just once, not just following the atmosphere. Okay, and that's kind of the key thing that I wanted to talk about. So I think it's something that's really cool and interesting too. All right, so this kind of uh, I'll, I'll say here's a couple of things that um, I can that we can kind of do together that will help us to look back at things, uh, uh, look back at things and really, really understand like okay, so what is um, like what can we do? right, to do this properly. So the first thing I think is very important is to compartmentalize. Now, what does that mean? Um, it's too hard to just say, what has God done in your life? What has God done for you? That is a huge topic. And we're going to be like, oh my gosh, there is so much that God has done for me. I don't even know what to start with, right? Which means that I think it's good that um, that we have... Um, uh, we kind of separate things into different categories. So it's a lot easier for us to focus, right? Like for instance, one of the things that I did first, I didn't say like finance and then my work and my school. No, no, I didn't do any of that. I just talked about things that I really like to do and enjoy right now. And these are so easy to think about because I enjoy it. I do it almost every day. For instance, YouTube, Morning Star Drive. Like this is something I enjoy. I love to do. I love meeting people, all these different things, getting new ideas, new topics, new subjects. I love it. And because I love to do this and I'm doing it almost every single day, the great part is I can start thinking about, wow, like look what God has done with the Morning Star Drive. I am so happy looking at how God started, how God inspired me, getting like how many times I've gotten new equipment from a mic to a new lap, two times I got a new laptop, reaching a thousand episodes like just a uh, you know uh two weeks ago the people i've met the people i've worked with the finances i've gained from it friendships colleagues you know and and like learning of how god has worked through it and how uh, how god is helping people through morning start like when i just start thinking about what i really really enjoy it's so easy for me to think and like all the things keep popping out more and more and more and i love it right? If I think about coffee, if I think about sports, all these things, I, just things start popping out in my mind like, wow, that's so true. Oh God, I'm so thankful about, oh God, I'm so thankful about this. And only after I went over the topics I really, really enjoy doing right now, I start to go over like the, the, the normal natural topics like finance, family, church, work, school, relationships. Like these are the things that I look at after and because they're a little bit, I would say they're a little bit more boring because they're not exciting on the tip. Like when I talk about, when I think about MSD, it's at the tip of my tongue and I'm like, oh, and what about this? Oh, and I thought, you know, Chris Jansen's thousandth episode video about me. Yeah, I was angry, but I'm happy at the same time. No, I'm just kidding, right? I was totally not angry. I thought it was hilarious. But, you know, there's so many things that come up. We're like, oh yeah. And because I like it and I enjoy it, it just keeps coming out more and more. And that's why I am grateful, super grateful, super thankful. It's awesome, right? Uh, when we get into, like, after I get over, like, MSD, you get, like, my coffee addiction, and, you know, thank you, God, for my coffee addiction and, and bringing me to a place that has really good coffee, right? Like, all these things I look at first, and then later, I'll start looking at, like, bigger things. Like, oh, yeah, what about my family? What about church? The mission that I have, right? The relationships that I keep, right? The work that I have. And thank you. Like, sometimes, don't you guys, like, those of you guys in the workforce, I have heard so many people talk about how God has blessed them in the workplace. God has blessed them with that job. But only a couple months later, they're complaining about that very job. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, like, we got to look back and say, this was blessed by God. Guess what? Every job, every school, every relationship, every you know, hobby that we have, we're going to have difficult times. Yes, it's going to suck at times. But... But don't forget, 
This is what you wanted. Like we wanted that job. We were praying to God for that work, that school that we wanted to go to. Like there's so many things that when we forget about them, we begin to not value what God has given to us. And that's this week's message too. A lot of the times is we forget what God has done, that God is the one that gave it to us. God answered our prayers And when it gets difficult, we start to complain and think that something went wrong and God is against us or whatever like that. And I think that's something that's probably one of the biggest reasons why we lose the values because we forgot that amazing miracle of God giving us the very thing that we wanted, right? So, you know, there's just so many things out there. And I think that uh, one thing that's going to kill us, one thing that's going to kill us, I do think, is if we... If our lists are too big, because it's very, it's a very daunting task to think about all the things one by one. And uh, I think we have to take this step by step, day by day. What does that mean? Like, you know, the next point of the, what Sunseem said in the message is don't make it a trend, right? Oh, Sunseem said for us to be thankful this week. So let's just be thankful this week. Like, I think that's obviously not a good way of handling it or a good way of doing it. That in order for us to not make it a trend, it can't be something we do all at once. It's something that is constantly evolving and growing, right? It's not a just this week type of thing, right? We, you know, how many times have we heard give thanks to God at all times, constantly, every year in our life, whatever it is, right? We should make it a habit. Yeah, but we're going to eventually make it into one of those once, you know, um, uh, you know, it's just something that we have to look at properly and say, okay, so what, what, what does this mean, right? So let me, let me, let me, uh, why did I just lose my train of thought? Oh, yeah, yeah. So not making it a trend, which means it doesn't have to be something we do all at once. What does that mean? Like this week, you know what? I'm going to focus on these 10 things to be thankful for every single day. Every single day. And then... Maybe, or maybe not, maybe for the next two weeks or three weeks or whatever it is. And then two, three weeks later, I'm going to go into another one of these topics. Let's just say family, uh, school, and my work. And I'm going to find like the top three things in each of those. And I'm going to be thankful for those things for the next two weeks after that. And then, you know, like it's going to keep evolving, right? It's going to keep getting better. And it'll actually turn into an everyday habit more than just something we're doing because God told us to do it kind of thing, right? Write it down. Write those things down. Write the things that are more significant in life. Write them down. Be thankful for them, right? And I think, you know, three pieces of advice in order for us to put this week's word into action and making it a lot more practical. Number one is write them down, right? Take them with you into your prayer. Number two, be consistent. Like I kind of said before is, don't end it this week. Should continue for a while. So institute some type of uh, ways that you can make it continue. Like I said before is every two weeks, change it up. And number three is I would say um, uh, consistency is like doing it constantly. And I think consistency and the third one, relevant, making it relevant or I think it's very, very similar to it. So if it's relevant and consistent, well, if you make it relevant, it'll be easier to do it more consistently. Right? Like I said, change your list every two to three weeks. Then it becomes relevant again because there's new things to be thankful for. And because of that, you can make it more consistent. And you know, I think we can reflect, uh, re- reflect more deeply on things. And as the weeks go by, write more deeply of why you're thankful for a certain thing. And I think that will also help. Because if you just do the same thing every time, oh, God, thank you so much for giving me my health. And, you know, but then what if you start thinking deeper about it? You know, God, there's this one time here. Oh, you know, you worked through this person. They gave me these vitamins and it really helped me here. God, and oh man, I I, I really remember that time here where I got injured and then you sent someone uh, to give me this or a doctor came to help me here or, you know, or someone gave me some tips on how to, you know, one thing that I struggled with when I was younger is I kept rolling my ankles. I broke my ankles three times playing basketball, whatever it was. But the thing was, is like, oh no, 
These are some exercises you can do to strengthen the joints around your ankle, strengthen the, the tendons and the ligaments around your ankle so you don't keep rolling your ankles. Like, oh, wow. And when I start doing it, it's like, oh, this is kind of, oh, this makes more sense kind of thing, right? And I do think this is something that we do have to kind of be conscious and deliberate about making things better each and every week or each and every day. Right. So I think this is probably the biggest thing that, you know, when, when I talked about it yesterday, yeah, this is going to be the biggest thing to, to, to take in how to make something more, um, how to think about one by one, all the things we should be thankful for in our life. And for me, I'm 45. I have so many things that I can look back and think about. But if I think about, try to think about every single thing, it's going to be impossible. Like not impossible. I'm going to be uh, discouraged. Oh, God, I'm going to think about, oh, but what about, oh, this is so hard. No, take it step by step. Or maybe you could focus on one thing, you know, yeah, like focus on five things for for every month or something along that line. Like whatever it is, I think it's something that we can really, really do well right? So uh, that's kind of the practical tip I have for this week's message. I hope it's something that you guys can really get your hearts and minds to think about more too. And just really have that mentality in the minds of being grateful, being thankful, and making sure that everyone really, um, everyone, that we could put these words into action. And it can be something that's not a huge thing every day, but a small thing every day that we can do, right? If it's, just, if it's too big, it's hard. But if it's really small that anyone can do it, it's not something that we're going to be like, oh, I don't want to do this, but we'll really, really want to do it. Okay? So there it is, guys. That is uh, the practical word study for today. I hope it's something that really helps you out to put the words of God into action. And if you have any uh, other questions or suggestions too, go ahead, leave them in uh, the comments below. Okay? So uh, there it is. Uh, before we get into Pravi in the media, let's first get into the second break of the day. 我看见主的模样 So alive, so alive 我听见主的声音 So clear, so clear 祂的爱融化我心
All right, so let's get into our final segment for today, and this is, of course, is Pravi in the media. And uh, just to give you guys a heads up, it's kind of a, it's a, it's, it's a bit of a lull uh, with a lot of this information that is coming out because Sun Sim's uh, trial, I believe his appellate trial, his appeals trial won't even start for another two weeks. Or maybe is it, it's next week, I believe, on February 6th, I believe. February 6th or 8th, one of the two. Um, but uh, there is one... Um, one exclusive uh, exclusive news from YTN, okay? So this is quite interesting. It's still kind of old news too, and uh, I, I think people already know this. A lot of people have already known this. It is c- quite public too, but I think it's something that you guys will really um, gain something from, and it helps us to have those mental exercises to think more deeply about, oh, what does this mean? What does this mean here, right? So here it is. Here's a... Um, Here is the article. It says, YTN exclusively obtained the trial verdict of CGM President uh, Sunsanim, who was sentenced to 23 years in prison on charges of sexual assault and false accusation. The ruling included Me Too testimony from several former believers who appeared as witnesses and said they had also suffered sexual crimes. In particular, it was confirmed that the court recognized the credibility of eyewitness testimony of sexual crimes against minors and preemptively ordered Sunsim to prohibit contact with minors. Now, CGM uh, president or Sunsim was sentenced to 23 years uh, in the first trial after being found guilty of committing sexual crimes against three female believers and denouncing the victims. Now, YTN obtained a 157-page first trial ruling on Sunsim. In addition to the extensive record of 23 sexual crimes, the court te- uh, the court testimony of four former members who appeared as witnesses was also included in the verdict. They consistently stated in court, I too was a victim of a sexual crime by Sunsnip. A former, J- uh, former JMS overseas manager who was indicted as an accomplice to a sex crime and sentenced to probation in the first trial testified that, that she was the victim of a, a sex crime too in 2018. Now, this uh, there is a Miss A who was a director level executive and Miss B who was uh, Sunseam secretary also stated that they had suffered sexual violence in 2019 and 2018 respectively. In addition, one believer explained uh, her own sexual harassment and said that she had seen Sunseam sexually harass a minor in 2018. Now the trial court acknowledged that all four of these testimonies were quote unquote reliable. Now KDH. Uh, anti jms activist, uh, uh, basically the court judges that the victim's testimony is also very credible. It is very likely that those who filed additional complaints will soon be indicted and all will be found, uh, all will be found guilty. Prosecutors and police are continuing their investigation to 18 people who filed complaints claiming they were victims. Now, if the charges against additional victims are recognized by the court, it is highly likely that the sentence of Sunstein, who was effectively sentenced to life imprisonment in the first trial, will increase further in the future. Okay, so now we look at this and say, oh my gosh, what just happened? This is actually the court trial report. And now, like, it doesn't, this is the interesting part for me is, it doesn't talk about the actual evidence there is. What is the main evidence in this trial? It is witness testimony. And the reason why this is so important for us to understand is, I told you guys last week what happened. Last week, the Supreme Court ruled that um, for sexual crimes, a person's testimony alone is not enough to sentence someone. Their testimony is not enough, right? And that's why we have to understand is, why is it considered reliable? 
Why? Because remember, before the Supreme Court ruling, which is January 22nd, I believe, is when the Supreme Court ruling came out, Sunseem's trial was in the beginning, like the, the sentencing was in the beginning of January, where a witness's testimony, as long as it's consistent, can be used as, you can use that as the sole basis without any evidence can be the sole um can the the testimony itself is enough to send someone to jail right so this is why you have to understand is why it's accepted because there was a ruling by the supreme court uh in the past that said as long as it's consistent we need to be gender sensitive and allow their testimony to be the sole basis to sentence someone to jail as long as it's consistent, right? So remember, this uh, this tri- like this information was allowable by the Supreme Court in the past, but only several weeks after they said it was no longer allowed, right? So that's why it is considered to be reliable and something that they put in as evidence, right? Which is, for me, which is kind of weird because if they're going to have their own trial, Right, So let's just pretend that these people, these four witnesses that were witnessing against Sunsunim, imagine all four of them have their trials later in the future and all of them lose. So if they lose their trial, then these witnesses have no credibility or bearing in this in Sunsunim's trial. Do you know what I mean? Like they haven't even had their trial, but they're going to say it's reliable and they're going to say that, that we're going to accept it. It doesn't make any sense because it, it's the same thing as when we talk about KJS is, hey, guess what? Sunseems trial isn't even finished. How can she be trial, tried for this when Sunseems hasn't even been finished? He hasn't even been proven guilty or anything, right? The same thing I think whole, uh, applies to this as in, this doesn't make any sense because number one is they even haven't even had their trial. So we don't, they're not even proven innocent or guilty, right? It's not true or false. And yet we accept it because it's consistent, right? And they have no evidence beside their own testimonies. Right? They have not shown that what they say is true. So even though they have not shown this, it hasn't gone through trial. We don't even know if, if it's true or false. Why would they still allow it to be entered as reliable and true uh, evidence? And like I said, that's why one of the big things that the Supreme Court did in the past was they allowed it without any evidence, just the testimony itself to be enough to send someone to jail or for it to be true as long as it's consistent, right? And that's why it's very interesting that this new Supreme Court ruling is saying that it if it doesn't have any evidence, remember, if it doesn't have evidence, which is, that is uh, Sunseem's trial. These people are, uh, witnesses come out without any evidence, right? And they're using these testimonies solely against Sunseem. And that's why it's something in the future that we do have to think about. Like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder how this Supreme Court ruling that happened last week is going to play in the appeals or the Supreme Court trial that's going to happen in the future. So that is something I'm looking at. Like, wow, like we're already seeing how um, how it how it's going to have some type of effect in the future to either this trial or the trial that happens in the Supreme Court. Either way. So that's that's kind of the only thing. The only other things that I saw that were really being talked about in uh, in uh, in the in the news is kind of the stuff I talked about last week, whether it's about women don't water. And what I you know, I've done a little bit of research on it and I asked some people what was going on. The problem that, you know, that uh, the the thing that we can testify to is people only paid for the shipping. Which from what I know as a head leader too. That is true. No one paid for the water itself. We paid for the shipping, right? So foreign countries, I have no idea if they actually paid for it or not. Like, oh, well, I think foreign countries, we didn't pay for it. Uh, I don't know what happened in Korea. I don't know what the situation is over there, but I know for sure in the foreign countries, it was only shipping costs that were paid. I don't know about what happened in Korea itself, right? So that is something that's under the laws for what, like selling water and stuff like that too. So I do believe it's not criminal. It's not a criminal trial, all right? So yeah, that's that's one of the things that were talked about. And also another one is the appeal trial for some executive, not not KJS, another two uh, 
two people that were executives and their appeal trial. I talked a little bit about this last week too, that they uh, their appeal trial was denied and they, you know, they, they're still in jail and stuff like that too. I, I believe one is for a year and a half and one is for a year, right? But yeah, not anything huge, not anything really, really like uh, new that is coming out. Just the, the article that I read for you, which is quite interesting, uh, but we see that the ruling from last week does play a role in that too. Okay, so there it is, guys. That is uh, this week's um, Pravi in the Media. Hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys enjoyed today's uh, Tuesday podcast. If you have any questions or any thoughts or things that you want to talk about, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear that too. Okay, so there it is, guys. That is today's uh, Tuesday podcast. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. Have a wonderful and awesome day, and we'll see you guys again tomorrow on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. The morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride, and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this. I got my head in the zone, you know.